Is matter really mostly empty space? Take a minute to try to answer this question. So think about everything you know about matter and try to answer this question as logically as you can. Pause the video if you need to. So hopefully you pause the video or you thought about it and you have an answer. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the correct answer to this question. And the correct answer to this question might, it might surprise you. I mean, you kind of have to think a little bit outside the box um, in, in order to understand it. But it's, it's pretty interesting, so that's why I'm making a video about it. So recall that uh, Ernest Rutherford in the early 1900s proposed his nuclear theory. And in his nuclear theory, it basically says that most of the mass and all of the positive charge are contained in a small localized region called the nucleus and the rest of the atom is filled with empty space that has these tiny 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 electrons within it and the empty space is much is much 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 larger in volume than the nucleus so that's so that's what Ernest Rutherford was saying in his nuclear theory so this one fact I'm gonna throw this fact at you and the fact is that the nucleus actually contains over 99.9% .9 of the atom's total mass, but it occupies very little of its volume, a very, very minuscule, small fraction of its volume. So based on this sentence, you, can, you could probably conclude that matter is mostly empty space. But this sort of begs the question, well, if matter is mostly empty space, then why aren't objects just falling into one another? Why can I tap my finger against this board and get a tapping noise, a strong tap, and it doesn't just push through the board every time. So that's, you know, that's sort of an interesting question. And the way I like to answer it is this. So suppose we have like this framework of steel bars. So suppose this is like a scaffolding or something. And suppose my bars are connected here, and here, and here, and here. And we have sort of a cage of these bars. So here's my scaffolding. Suppose if, um, okay, first of all, this scaffolding is mostly empty space, isn't it? The, the volume of the space in between the bars is much, much uh, larger than the volume of the individual bars themselves, right? So, what I'm trying to get at is, if you were to view this scaffolding from up in the air, like 30,000 feet up in the air from, from an airplane or a helicopter or something like that, then you wouldn't really see what looks like this porous object here. You would see something that looks like more solid. And that is basically the phenomenon that's going on with matter in general, with atoms. The cages that the atoms make up, essentially, in a solid object, they can crash into one another, but they don't fall into one another because they're locked into these cages. And any density differences associated with one part of the one part of the solid to another we can't really observe those because they're on such a small small scale so that in a nutshell is why atoms are indeed and indeed all matter is mostly empty space